Well, hello again everybody, and today I'm going to be having a look at this old valve radio. Now this radio came from uh, one of the local charity shops, and my, uh, my, my beautiful wife spotted it in the, uh, in the window. And she knows that I like um, basically radio equipment and old electrical stuff, so uh, yeah, she bought it for me and brought it home knowing how much I like radios. And uh, it's, I've got to admit, the, uh, the cabinet on this radio is really pretty it's it's obviously bakelite some kind of old uh, phenolic resin but it really has you know that kind of beautiful wood um, stroke patina you know the old bakelite patina which just comes from years and years of um, I guess polishing with Mr Sheen or whatever it was it's got a few little cracks in it but um, yeah, nothing, nothing particularly serious it's uh, yeah it's looking very nice and uh, it's got the label on it, the typical label on it, that says basically always seek the advice of a qualified electrician before using and uh, yeah, problem is I don't know any qualified electricians so I, I guess we'll just have to do the, uh, the best we can. Now I think when she bought it from the shop um, they did say they thought there might be a problem with a radio because uh, apparently it was getting a bit hot but one unusual thing about this valve radio is that it just seems to have um, one knob on the front and I've got some unfortunately I don't know if there's something wrong with the knob but yeah I'm trying to turn it but yeah it's pretty jammed. Now obviously this must be some kind of uh, combined tuning and volume control. Yeah really really clever design because uh, you know I don't know how they've managed to uh, combine all the normal functions of a radio on, on just one knob but they've, uh, they've managed it somehow. Yeah, unfortunately though, it just seemed to be um, stuck. Well, I've just turned the radio around and we've got a nice big label on the back of it. And it said that it was manufactured by the General Electricity Company of England, or GEC. And uh, the catalogue number for those playing along at home was DM245. And it's, uh, what have we got here? It's two, what was that, 220 to 230 volts. I'm actually quite amazed at this radio. Just looking at it, it says that the output is a thousand watts. Now that's nearly as loud as some of the little Citroen Saxos that drive past my house at three o'clock in the morning. Now I'm just wondering what we should do next. Should we, uh, should we plug it in or should we uh, take it apart? I think we should maybe plug it in and see if we can get any tunes on it. Oh, <laughs> I understand now why they couldn't pick up any radio reception on it because the uh, the power cable just appears to be uh, <laughs> pushed into the back of it, not even connected. And it, maybe this has started to make a bit more sense now because my wife said when she got it from the shop, they said that this, this particular item that they had for sale had come from a company that um, does old film set equipment. And so I'm guessing that this must have been a, a prop. So uh, maybe this valve radio doesn't, doesn't work anymore. Anyway, it certainly wouldn't work with this cable attached. But as I said, the cable is really nice. It's, uh, you know, a modern cable, but it's, um, it's it, you know, it's cloth covered. Oh, but that's a surprise. There's a, there's a cable inside it. Oh, <laughs> we've actually got... All oh, right. Oh, this has got to win an award. This has this got to win the new crap plug of the month award? Oh, and a particularly horrible crusty wire. Oh, look at that. Look at the crusty goodness. Oh yeah. Oh, I think we might actually have red and black wires under here. Proper wire colours. None of this. Uh, none of this blue and brown nonsense. Whatever happened to uh, black and red? Oh, look at that. This wire really is particularly horrible and crusty and disgusting. Although I shouldn't say it's disgusting, it's actually just, it's a wonderful patina. Yeah, so actually if we sell this we can charge extra for that. Look at the patina. Before we uh, fire this radio up, I think we'll have to put a new cable on it. And let's have a close look at that crusty plug. Now I doubt this is probably the original plug that came with the uh, equipment because I'm not sure when this, you know, this British standard three pin plug came out. In fact, in fact I can't remember what the, uh, the British standard number for this is, but I'm sure you all recognise it. But one thing that I think is really interesting about these plugs is the design was really ahead of its time. Because if you look at the, uh, the modern plugs, they actually have insulators on the live and the uh, neutral terminals. But back in the day, they actually thought about that 
And what they actually did is they didn't put insulators on here. And the important thing about that is it actually removes all the bloody idiots from the gene pool who do things like stick the fingers in plugs. So just as a comparison, if we look at a modern plug, you can see you've got insulators there. And basically what the purpose of them is, there is some people in the world that are so totally dense that they might, when they pull the plug out, they manage to get both the fingers on the live terminals. So the idea of the insulators is that by the time you can create enough of a gap between the actual plug socket and the live prong here, the exposed part of the metalwork, you'll actually have disconnected the plug from its plug socket. You know, basically our forefathers had enough intelligence not to put out the fingers on live wires, but yeah, I think I'll keep that just because it's unsafe. And I think it's time for another round of what fuses in the plug? What fuses in the plug? Some of us have big fuses, some of us have small fuses. What sort of fuse am I? Okay, place your bets, place your bets, last chance. And 13 amp, is that a surprise? No, not even slightly. Look at those beautiful black and red wires, totally sensible colours opposed to this French brown and blue nonsense. Hey, I wonder if when we leave the EU we can actually start using sensible wire colours again. There's a bonus I never thought of. Now I'm going to actually cut this plug off because basically it's just too nice to waste. And I'm not going to disconnect it. Basically I much prefer to uh, you know, just cut the end off it and then just, I don't know, just leave it lying around the house. Maybe I should bear the wires first. Now an engineer told me before he died, a rum titty bum titty bum titty bum, a rum titty bum titty bum. I think I've found the problem with this radio. I, I definitely think it's probably all the wax capacitors that need replacing, because that's normally always the problem, isn't it? This switch is definitely a little bit stiff. Oh, I think I might have spotted another problem as well with the uh, with the switch. I'm just struggling to get this switch out. It's got uh, some clips on retaining the cabling. I will be with you in a minute, guys. Okay, I think we're going to be able to get the main switch out. Okay, okay I've got the uh, I've got the switch out, and uh, yeah, I think we might need some switch cleaner on here. Oh, it's got a nice action though. <laughs> I actually, quite like that. It's got like a huge spring-loaded arm that just wanks across from one side to the other. And it's actually really quite slow and ponderous in its action. I just love that. That's brilliant. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Can you see that? I'm trying to make, turn it in an orientation that you'll be able to see everything. Can you? Is that good in it in there? I don't know. I love that switch. It's got a lovely action. Again, proper man switch. It's uh, got a porcelain on it, and this is also made by GEC. What does it say on there? Oh, it actually says five eight five five eighths of an amp, or is it five to eight amps? I'm not sure. Looks like it's, it's actually got the way it's spelled. It looks like five eighths, but uh, I don't suppose it is. I'm just looking at the way this switch operates, and there's a. Uh, there's kind of a couple of, I'll, I'll spring it back, there's a, a couple of little switch blades there. Basically, it's like a knife switch really, there's a set of switch blades there and a set of uh, switch blades there. And I can just stick the screwdriver between them there. But what actually happens is when you click the switch, the, uh, I don't know, what do you call it, the armature basically swings forward and it shorts this side of the switch to the other side. So that's the on position. And that's the off position. That's great, that. So I think we just need to put some contact cleaner on both these switches here. And then I think what we'll do is we'll just replace a couple of the wax capacitors that look, don't look too good. And then we'll do, um, we'll do an IF alignment. Now, just last week, I was having a conversation via the YouTube comments with Simon, who'd just been doing an alignment on a radio. And uh, I think we were just basically comparing trimmer tools. And I said that all the ones I've got are rubbish. And uh, so, yeah, I just thought it might be worth just having a quick look at my rubbish trimming tool collection. Yeah, and in this conversation I had with Simon, I think Simon was saying, can you send me a link um, to the trimming tools that I use? Because uh, I think he maybe misunderstood when, when I said that I had some good ones. But actually, 
what I was actually what I was actually saying is that all the trimming tools that I have are an absolute load of rubbish. So I remember not very long ago um, I bought these from I think Farnell or RS somebody like that, and these are probably the, the most common ones you do see for sale these days, and uh, they just feel as though they're made out of some nylon material, and uh, yeah, I mean they're just totally rubbish. Um, the actual blades on them are so soft. Now when you actually are dealing with ferrites you um, you don't really want to use metal tools. One, because it will kind of detune, it will defeat your attempt to pick up the IFs. The other problem is if you put, put a metal tool inside you stand a good chance of um, damaging the core, shattering the ferrite material. So you don't want the tools to be too hard. But these are just the opposite extreme. I mean they're made out of very thin, I think probably nylon material and you know all cores have a little bit of resistance to them you know the an iron uh, you know a dust core or a ferrite core it has to be a little bit stiff or it would um you know it would constantly adjust itself all the time so sometimes you need a little bit of force just to get them moving and uh, you know I've, I've not managed to actually tune anything with any of these yet you basically you stick the tool in turn it slightly and all it does is break the end off the tool they, they just they're just utterly garbage. There's in no way fit for purpose. So that's some of them. And there's all, but there is a collection of weird and wonderful ends on these. You know, hexagons, flat blades, um, bigger hexagons. And yeah, what they have in common is they're all rubbish. Now I seem to think that I got these of a, as a set off um, eBay, and uh, I think they were relatively expensive. I don't even know if these came from America, and they've got the branding pro stick on them. And they came with a set of three, and uh, these are kind of okay. The only problem with them is they seem pretty high quality. The, the plastic material is a lot stiffer, but they don't fit everything. Now, this is probably the most common pattern uh, that everybody's used before, and uh, these are probably my most common trimmers that I use. I seem to use these for every for everything, and a lot of people actually make you know the same style of trimmer. It's kind of a common pattern, if you like. So you've got a little brass blade at one end and you've also got a brass blade at the other but this one is actually inset, it's got like a ring round it and I think the purpose of that ring is is when you're actually using this trimming tool on a, one of these little micro potentiometers if you're not careful when you, when you put it in you keep slipping off it so the, the, well, it's got this guide ring round it there which basically just limits it, makes sure you can't, you can't slip off the head of the screw I'll see if I can bring you in to see that. You might not be. You might be able to see. So I hope. I don't know if you will be able to see, but basically there is a there's a little strip of brass there, and it's surrounded by a ring of plastic. And the the purpose of that little ring of plastic, it it just stops the tool, the blade, from slipping out the little screw head that you've got it in. And then the other end is just a you know the brass blade just stands proud. And that these are pretty worn actually, because I use them all the time. These are these. This is like one of my most used trimming tools. And this is just a close-up view of the uh, the pro stick ones. As I say, I think that I got these via eBay, but I don't know if they did actually come via an American seller. And these do seem like very high quality. And as I said, these came as a set of uh, three. So there's the one with the uh, with the inset with the inset blade there, surrounded by the ring. And then it's got the uh, the blade that stands proud at the other end. And then it came with. Um, with another one which has got like the uh, the hexagon ends on the hexagon ends to it rather than being flat bladed, but the problem with with this little uh, kit is there's just so many varieties of dust cores and ferrite cores that uh, you, you need you need a lot more than this. Now a few years ago I bought this kit of trimming tools made by CK Electronics and these were manufactured in West Germany, and I think these are quite a, a reasonable quality tool. But again, out of all of them, there only seems to be uh, you know one or two that you ever seem to get to use, and even um, even these supposedly high quality tools, the plastic material is is still quite vulnerable. You know, if there's any kind of um, resistance in the in the dust core or anything, it just tends to break the ends on them because uh, I think there was probably more tools in the set than I had, and uh, yeah, they they seem to get. They seem to get broken, but these were quite expensive from memory. I think the set that I had was 
it might have had a couple of more more than this in it but i seem to think it was about i don't know i seem to think it was about 30 pounds or something and yeah they, they're not fantastic at all um in fact you can probably see that maybe some of them are even are damaged at the ends but they're not they're not too bad but they're also not great either now i've got another set here these cream colored ones i think they came from rapid electronics um and again they're uh, they're just garbage basically <laughs> the uh the ones uh, that have got the metal blade inserts yeah they're probably usable but the ones that have got the uh, the plastic ends on them they just they're not they're not very good and what they've got actually is some of these have got the um, little plastic screwdriver tip on it i can see just looking at this one that you know it's twisted off i've obviously had this in a core and i've turned it and it's just basically damaged the end but the, this these are like a combination tool that i can see on the on near the front there's a hexagon section and then there's a flat blade and then this one has got a bigger hexagon section and a flat blade um that one's got i'll throw that away because that one's just got the end broken off completely so that can go i was going to say here's one that's got the blade inset like the other ones we were looking at but it, i think looking at it the actual blade that should be inside it has obviously fallen off broken so yeah so so that one's rubbish as well so that can be thrown away so here's another of those rapid trimming tools and i think this one is manufactured rather than having a brass blade at the end it's just got a piece of plastic and the piece of plastic is so thin it's such a small component that the reality is it can't do anything but break i mean just actually even putting it on the trimming tool is enough to start deforming the tool they, they're just not the material just isn't strong enough for the uh, intended purpose so yeah that's rubbish as well now i've got a collection of uh, basically these little plastic tools and these actually seem pretty good um, from memory these are the kind of things that you know when you buy an oscilloscope you always get a, a couple of pot a couple of trimming tools for uh, just setting up the probe the probe compensation and uh, yeah i think this one's in the shape of a little star at one end like a little cross head and the other end's a flat blade and actually these are these are quite robust material they feel you know quite hard um, harder material than uh, the nylon you know you, nylon again i'd just say it's probably too soft although there's lots of different types of nylon this feels like you know it's harder it's more would it would it be called like a zetol material or something it's just a, just a much harder plastic so they're not too bad now this is an unusual one i seem to think that this one it looks like um, it's made from wood um, but i think it's maybe some kind of phenolic resin maybe bakelite or something it could be wood but it actually feels really quite a bit a bit harder than wood would feel um, and what's it got printed on it's got printed in the words i think it might be 18 9 18 slash 9v i don't know if it's okay uh, i seem to think that this might have come inside something like a you know an old communication receiver something like a i don't know maybe something like an ar88 it was the trimming tool that you find in the in the back of it clipped in and i think that basically i got sick of the receiver and buried it in the garden but i did save this uh this trimming tool probably sharp intake of breath there wasn't there no i didn't bury them in the garden there uh yeah threw them in this threw them in the canal yeah um so that's my uh, collection of rubbish trimming tools. Now, one thing I have seen um, on some of the American YouTube channels, I've seen some people um, reviewing Chinese trimming tools and they've actually got ceramic tips on them. And I'd really quite like to try some of them. And uh, But whenever I've, I've Googled them or have a look on eBay, they don't seem to have anything um, or they don't seem to be showing for delivery in the UK. So maybe I need to actually have a look at the... Um, uh, you know ebay.com but rather than .co.uk but these ceramic trimming tools always seem to get really good um, reviews and they only cost like a couple of pounds each and you can get really big sets for like 10 pounds so i'd quite like to get that get some of them so i don't know if anybody out there and i think the vintage electronics guy there i think he's in america i don't know if, if he's used any of these uh uh, ceramic trimmers that a lot of people are raving about in america but I'd, I'd love to know if anybody's tried them and if they're any good um 
I'm kind of conscious that if the fact that they're ceramic, do the blades of them snap very easily? Um, I don't know, but I'd be interested to know because I'd really quite like to try them because I feel as though I need to upgrade these. And just if anybody knows of uh, anywhere you can still buy quality trimming tools, because I'd love to buy a new set because the ones I've got, they just yeah, they're just not very good, are they? I need some new ones. Let's tidy them away. Oh, we better just keep one out to do our IF alignment. <laughs>